You know, over the you know next few minutes here, before we get some beers, uh, I just wanted to talk to Andy a lot about you know what you guys are doing in craft. Um, you guys have bought four breweries now. Um, really, it's the last three that I think have you know caught people's attention and and caught people's eye. When you guys certainly when you guys bought Goose Island, um, you know there was uh, some interesting comments online, but sort of changed your strategy a bit. It seems focusing much more on local now, a little bit smaller companies. Um, what's the strategy when you guys are out there analyzing companies to, to acquire? Well, f first of all, thanks for inviting me here. It's good to be here and good to see you again. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, from our perspective, as, as we look at uh, uh, trying to partner with, with craft breweries, I mean, pro probably one of the first things that's really most important is uh, is having a, a management team, an ownership team, that uh, that wants to stay involved in the business, and and, and that's uh, that's pretty critical to us uh, to keep that culture going. Um, so so I think strategically having somebody again long term that wants to stay in, and then uh, you know the, the the brands really are, are also very critical. You know we talked about uh, flagship fatigue. We want to make sure the brands are strong, the beer is great. There's an amazing. Uh, culture uh, in the company, a beer culture, you know, a group of people that love beer, uh, because, you know, Anna's Bush is a, uh, is, is a beer company, and, and internally uh, there's a lot of passion and love for beer. So, I mean, adding partners to our family, we want to make sure that uh, that culture, uh, you know, is, is uh, very focused on beer. Um, and then the other strategic thing I think that's very critical for us, <clears throat> we, we are very biased, uh, uh, very biased about uh, our wholesalers. We want to make sure that uh, that we partner with uh, uh, other brewers, that we have the ability to have those brands distributed through our network, our dis distribution network. We've got quite a, uh, a very, a very uh, uh, successful distribution network, 500 plus distributors out there. It's kind of world-class distribution system, so we want to make sure we're able to utilize that and build our brands through that system. That's a key component us in terms of, of, of building a brand because some of the things that you talked about earlier um, uh, is very true in terms of distribution, being able to get on the shelf, uh, and that, uh, that, that, that's a, a critical piece of it, and, and having a team out there that's able to you know, connect locally, sample, do all the things that you do in the accounts, uh, having that distribution network that's got the relationships, has got the ability to get in there is, is critical. So. And certainly being aligned uh, for you guys would be sort of a make or break, it would seem. Uh, if a potential craft that you were looking at purchasing, uh, you know, had too much unraveling um, in order for you guys to make the deal happen, would that be a deal breaker? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, uh, we, we want we want to work with our distributors. It's a critical piece of the, uh, of the success. So, so again, you know, we've, we've, looked, we've uh, talked to, uh, obviously, a lot of different craft uh, businesses, owners, and so forth, and uh, some of them, as they start to get big, start to have too much of that uh, uh, competitive distribution system in their, you know, in their mix. And, and, and again, uh, that, uh, that's something that we look Right. So um, the last two companies that Anheuser-Busch has purchased, Elysian and Ten Barrel, um, a little bit smaller, um, definitely focused, uh, you know, very heavily on their local markets, especially Ten Barrel. Um, you know, I guess talk to me about the, the strategy of finding these companies that are in uh, pockets of the country where um, local is a huge focus and, and going a little bit smaller than perhaps you did when uh, you acquired Goose Island. Well, even when we bought Goose, though, Goose was a, was a Midwest, f fairly small brewery. It was our first acquisition, and uh, we had a really big need from our, from our system to get that brand out to, to everyone. And we bought that, and the call started coming in from our wholesalers. You know, we would love to get the brand out in our market. So we, we pretty quickly ramped out Goose Island nationally. <clears throat> and then, you know, like you, like, uh, you guys talked about earlier, we invested in, 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 in trying to get, build the brand, you know, nationally. So that has worked well, uh, and the brand's doing phenomenal. Goose is up. Now you can look at the IRI numbers. I mean, we're 20, 30% growth trend after rolling national. I think we've been out national for about three years now. 
Um, so, so what's really good now is we're able to fill in with uh, some good, strong regional uh, players. And you know, to be honest with you, um, I, we'll see if, if a 10 bar or a Legion or a Blue Point at some point down the road uh, is either a national brand or available national. <clears throat> Doesn't necessarily have to mean that, you know, uh, a, a, as we take these regionals and, and roll them in every state, we can roll them into, you know, individual markets with individual brands and packages. So, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity, again, to, to build these in, in a lot of different ways. So I think, uh, you know, Goose na National and having these strong regionals is a nice model for us. It, it, it definitely plays against the uh, demand for local. But what's really interesting, again, in the industry is as this thing has evolved, right, and, and craft uh, obviously has been strong for many years. I mean, I've been in the beer business a long time, and, that, you know, I remember drinking craft beer back in the 80s, uh, and, you know, it was a small niche of people, but craft's been around for a long time. But as, as it's continued to grow and, and become, you know, a, a 10 to 15 share of the industry, um, what's, what's, what's happening is, you know, there's such a broad range of consumer demands and taste out there. So, so, so having a portfolio of big brands like a Budweiser and a Bud Light, uh, uh, into brands like Shock Top, uh, which, again, isn't a craft beer, uh, but it's perceived... Uh, again, as a uh, as a, uh, a nice, accessible, uh, more flavorful beer than a Bud or Bud Light, all the way into craft, Goose Island National, Ten Barrel, local. Uh, I don't think we'll get down to the nano level, but that's a nice range of of brands to have to address a lot of consumer demand uh, across the spectrum. So it's a uh, it's a pretty nice portfolio. So I think those regional. Uh, uh, opportunities give us the ability again to address local and, and, and as well as address the whole range of consumer demand out there. So I, I don't know if I've um, <clears throat> ever heard you guys actually say that that Shock Top is not a craft beer well, brand. Well, you know, I, I don't I, I don't even want to get into the definition. To me, it, it's all beer. Uh, so I don't even the, the sure. definitions. You know, I think that was important a long time ago when when there was a small niche of people that drank craft beer, but. There's so many consumers now that have come in the industry that drink craft beer or, 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 or a variety of beer. Uh, I think there's, a, there's a, so many people that don't, could care less, again, what the definition is. And like I said, from my perspective, uh, there, there's, there's a ton of consumers, obviously, that love great Pilsners and Lagers, like a Miller Lite, Coors Lite, Bud Lite, a ton of, and it could care less for, you know, the ingredient story, where the hops came from, right? They don't care. They just want to have a beer, want to enjoy it, sure. want to get refreshed. All the way to people that are drinking brands like Blue Moon, Shock Top, that, again, don't really care that it's, you know, is this really a, a local, authentic craft beer? Is it, that she, Blue Moon's a two, I think about a two and a half million barrel brand. So it's a very, that's a large brand. Uh, all the way down to someone that cares uh, about, uh, again, I only want beer that's made in my local uh, region, local neighborhood, so, so a there's a range. Consumers, yeah. There's a range, and there's no need to, to, to fight. And I'll tell you, the, the, uh, what's interesting uh, is, uh, and, and, and he, the gentleman mentioned it earlier, I mean, the, the, the fight is really, you know, it's the, the wine and, and spirits are really what's, what we should be fighting against, right? And we have lost a lot of volume as an industry, to wine and spirits, a ton of buy. I mean, the high-end uh, imports and crafts have done an amazing thing for the industry in terms of, of giving us a seat at the table in a lot of occasions that we never were involved in, eating occasions, savoring occasions. Um, so so, so it's, it's really done an amazing uh, thing for the industry in terms of, 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 of keeping us in the game and elevating beer against beer and wine. So when I start to get into or, or wine and spirits, so, so I don't, you know, again, the definition of craft, non-craft, sure. shock top, I think that's a bad thing for the industry and for everybody sitting in, in this room, Def right? Definitions aside, um, you know, I think categorizing it the way you, you did in the sense that there are consumers that might prefer a Budweiser, there are consumers that might prefer a shock top, and then there are those that prefer uh, some of the craft uh, offerings that are coming out of the companies that you're, you're buying. Yeah. Um, I mean, clearly you're addressing a need there uh, and, and spending against that by, by purchasing these brands. Um, how is that going to sort of, I guess, um, when you guys go to market with these companies and, and when you go to market with your high-end portfolio, um, how are you going to act in the marketplace with craft? 
and you know, long term, what's the goal, uh, not only in the craft space, but just in general with that high-end division? Well, let's see. Let me just two questions here. I guess you know the goal. The goal. Um, I mean, it would be. It. It, it would be. It, you might not believe this, but you know there isn't a volume goal or a share goal for us in the high end. It, it, it really uh, lingers back to uh, to the ability. Our goal is to continue to elevate beer as an as a, as a as, a, uh, as as an industry. You know, Anheuser Busch has got. A large share, 40, 48 share of the of the industry. So we have a good opportunity to help continue to raise and elevate beer. And like I said earlier, um, you know, it's 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 amazing. The um, the uh, we have some some brands in our portfolio, Goose Island. We have some sour beers. As a matter of fact, we're going to have some of them tonight for those of you that are coming over to the to the group to the tap room. We have some uh, sour beers that we age in wine barrels and so forth. And some of these beers. Uh, sell for forty, fifty dollars a bottle for a seven sixty five bottle, and I, I, every drop I make, I sell, and it's selling for for that level, uh, that price point in in stores, and most of it's sold in in a lot of, uh, you know, uh, urban restaurants, uh, you know, that uh, that uh, all, all across the country. So there's this, you know, there's this amazing, uh, you know, um, uh, young chefs that are so comfortable using beer. And putting beer in, in on their menus with food versus wine, and that's so. There's a huge, huge movement uh, for beer infiltrating those spaces, and that, that's significant. So our goal is to continue to, you know, make sure beer gets a seat at the table and is, is served in those kinds of uh, in those kinds of occasions. There's a ton of iron consumed there, right? So. I mean, food food seems to be a big part of what you guys do at Goose. I mean, I know. Uh, not this year, but last year, you guys were uh, partnered up with the the Koshan tour yep. and going around the country with them. Um, do you see more partnerships like that in your future, both for Goose and some of your other craft brands? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we love to do things uh, with with chefs, and we do some things. Uh, Paul Kahn here in Chicago, and we partner with uh, with with, with uh, a lot of chefs in in different markets. Um, so, so all that stuff is, is so important, you know, as an industry, again, to continue to, uh, uh, I mean, wine has done an amazing job. You know, it's interesting, I was reading uh, this, this article the other day, and it made so much sense to me. It's, it, it, it was talking about how, how wine kind of became this default uh, 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 drink uh, for food because, you know, as, as cuisines, as the, as the French cuisine, the Italian cuisine came into America, you know, they brought their local drink with them, which was wine. And it kind of, you know, by default became uh, something that was paired. And the wine industry has done an amazing job of marketing and connecting wine with food. But the truth is beer, there's so much, so much more complexity in terms of flavor profiles of beer that pair well with food, right? So it's, I know it's four ingredients, hops, yeast, malt, but the, the range of hops and the range of yeast and the amount of flavors that come out of there and the right. ingredients with fruits and things you can do with beer is unbelievable. So it feels like beer is finally getting its, its place, you know, in those occasions. So, seat at the table. Seat at the table. <laughs> so that's the objective of our high end is to continue to elevate beer, not to go out and steal share from everybody and try to grow at 500%, uh, but just to, to, to help move beer forward and keep beer uh, front and center. Right. So I've asked you this like, I don't know how many times now, and I, I feel like every time you always uh, give me the same answer, so I'm just going to keep asking until I get the answer I want, which is, is there a regional strategy with uh, your guys' acquisitions? Because you guys, it's, it seems so clear that you guys are focused on, um, you know, finding breweries in very specific, not necessarily very specific markets, but on a regional level. Um, are you guys going to be looking uh, towards a regional strategy as you guys look to buy more brands? Well, see, Chris, you're always looking for, like, you want headlines. You no, want I'm not always looking conflict. for headlines. You want me to say something like, <laughs> we want to buy everybody. And, yeah, yeah, so uh, th this strategy, the strategy is uh, it's, uh, it's fairly loose. It, it really is fairly loose. I mean, obviously, we have 10 Barrel and Elysian up in, in the pack Northwest, so I don't think we'd be buying a third one up there, right? right. Uh, but... but, but, but uh, uh, you know, and it really goes back to uh, as we talk with people, um, as, it go, I, as I said earlier, you know, uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of breweries out there that were built uh, to, uh, to be sold. Uh, and, and, you know, so, so 
it goes back to that's not something we're interested in. We're, we're looking for like someone who, who really is passionate about beer and built this, this beer business and loves the beer and wants to be involved. So, so that drives it a lot more than, hey, we need something in Georgia. Sure. Uh, you know what I mean? So, so it's, it's as much about buying the talent as well as just yeah, the, the actual culture, brand and the... The culture. I think what's important, too, is, is, is uh, you talked a little bit about succession planning and that, um, you know, the, 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 all of these places have got to be bigger than their owners, right? Because their owners are going to eventually retire or die or whatever. So, uh, so, so having an owner and that culture that has been developed there, right? And, and it's very unique as we talk to different different craft companies, and you all know this yourselves, but you know, every little craft company's got their own culture that's been developed, and, and you can really see an enormous difference in their, in their cultures. And that's a lot of the magic of the brands, is people buy into the, into the owner's you know, culture and their passion and their stories. So you know, as we go in and we partner and acquire, having that, 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 that really powerful passion and the culture and the people in the company that are also passionate about beer. Like I said, we're a beer company. You know, we're beer lovers. Yeah, we're a business. We're a business, but we're beer lovers. Um, and 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 uh, and so that's critical. So, uh, you know, if, if that happens in Nevada or if that happens in Minnesota, um, I mean, we're all over that. And you know, not, there aren't people saying, "Well, Minnesota's not good. Uh, it's 400 miles away from here. We need to go down here." It, that stuff's not happening. We're, we're, we're talking, entertaining, looking for that, uh, for that passion, that love, the strength of the brand. The other thing, too, and I'll shut up, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, we, we, we can bring a lot to the party, obviously, with a, with a uh, distribution system and also, you know, with some brand building uh, help. And that varies. You know, it's, Goose Island's been an amazing, uh, uh, has an amazing uh, portfolio of brands. And when, when we did the partnership with, Go with Goose, we were able to really help them a lot with some of the brand building. Sure. Um, you know, the guys, at, guys and girls at Ten Barrel, uh, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty strong. And, and, and they've got a little, you know, we're not rolling national with them right now. You're expanding a bit. We're expanding in the, in, in the Northern Cal and to Denver. Um, but they've got, got a good handle on, so it's kind of hands off. We're kind of letting them just kind of do their thing. Sure. Um, uh, so it all, it, it definitely it varies. But we've got, uh, bring a lot to the party as we, as we bring these uh, companies, you know, into the, uh, into the family. Did, did you guys expand Goose too quickly? I don't think so. I mean, I've, you know, there's debate over that. Um, I tell you, the, the best way in the world to do it, I guess, is, uh, is the way many, craft, uh, many of the amazing uh, national craft brands have done it slowly over 20, 25, 30. Yingling, which is, you know, <laughs> is still rolling national. been rolling national since, I think, 1812, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's an, an amazing way to do it because they build such talk value in states, uh, you know, around where they are. So it's a lot easier uh, uh, to slowly roll out, you know, build the build the brand and then roll the next state. But That's from, the ideal way. But to from do the it. time you guys announced, uh, you know, going national with Goose to the time that you know the product was in all 50 states, I mean, it was quick. Like, it was overnight. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, pent up demand in our wholesaler system, right? So part of part of my uh, or my obligation or is, is to make sure that we're giving the distributors in all these markets the right portfolio for them to be able to to be successful in their marketplaces, right? So, so, so they need crafts. So if a wholesaler says to you, or if a lot of your wholesalers are saying, we really want this 10 barrel brand, uh, does that automatically mean that you know, you're gonna take it to them? What did you learn from rolling Goose out as quickly as you did that you might tweak or adjust the strategy with the other brands? Yeah, well, I think now that Goose is out there and the wholesalers are, are working it and building it, I mean, the I, our IPA right now is, is just, Riding the amazing trend of uh, people going to IPAs, I think the thing the thing's been growing at like 150 percent since the beginning of the year. I mean, it's flying out there. So I think our distributors have got a good portfolio on Goose Island. They've got some pretty strong brands uh, that they're that they're growing. Uh, so there's less. I'm able to, and I do get calls for Ten Barrel from all over the place, Elysian, uh, and I'm able to say, you know. Eventually, we'll bring it to Miami, but in the meantime, we're going to stay up in, 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 uh, in Oregon and stay, stay up here, continue to work Goose Island. So, so I'm able to uh, work it a little, bit, uh, a little bit now that they have you know, the Goose portfolio. And so uh, so it's, uh, it's like I said, there's a lot of requests, and sometimes it's hard to say no. But yeah. So um, probably not a magic number, obviously, in terms of how many breweries you guys will ultimately acquire. Um, 
internally, I'm sure there's some kind of number on, on how much you'll actually spend uh, on these brands, but how about the spending against these brands? And at some point, you know, you guys got to get to a point where, okay, we've spent enough to buy them, now we have to spend to market them, to get sure. the feet on the street, to Absolutely. expand. Absolutely. So how do you balance those two, um, you know, knowing that Absolutely. as you buy, you're going to have to continue to reinvest against those, those brands? That, that's all built into, into, into the, the model, if you will. Listen, I'm not going to take shots at, 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 at uh, private equity, but we, we are a beer company, and we are doing this for the long term. Ten Barrel is going to be around. We have a long-term vision and focus. These things are not going to go out of business. We're not going to discontinue their brands. So part of acquiring them and bringing them in is the perception and the investment to make sure that we've got a long-term view. And that's why, again, it goes back to working with partners and owners of these companies that, 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 that's, that believe in that. For example, John Hall at Goose Island, um, we started talking to him. It was clear right away. He's like, I, you know, my dream is to make Goose Island a, a available nationally. I want to build this into a national brand. Now, I don't know if he wanted to do it as quickly as we did it, <laughs> but, but, but that, was, that was kind of uh, what his dream, dream was. So that's why it's, it's good for us to partner with people that also are interested in building their brand, right. making it available. So this is a long term. I, I don't sit in meetings um, and, and uh, have to review uh, you know, volume numbers and share numbers. The company's not looking, looking, uh, looking at those kinds of things. This is a long-term play, so it's all part of, 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 of the model. And we do invest in building them. I'm spending money to, to build Goose Island because outside of Chicago, and it's the hardest thing. Many of you in this room know this, but but it's the hardest thing in the world is to really take your you know your local magic um, and and bring that to other markets. And you get so myopic, you think, oh, gosh, everybody knows Chicago. Everyone knows Goose Island. When I roll it out to Santa Fe, New Mexico, they're going to love it. You know, down there, they could give a crap about Chicago, right? But you think, uh, so you really have to really uh, figure out how to, how to connect and connect long term, right? And this thing moves very fast. Uh, I mean, the life cycle of these brands is quick, so you got to really uh, you got to be pretty good at, at building these brands long term, investing in them, putting the right messaging out there, have the right rotation of innovation. I mean, it's it's pretty complex. So you talked about the long term play with some of these acquisitions. Uh, will you guys be able to resist the urge to grow too quickly with some of these brands as uh, you start to realize, okay, we can you know, maybe produce some of these products over here in in some of our breweries. We can expand in these ways as you start to realize some of the synergies. Will you be able to throttle it back so that they can organically grow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because two things. First of all, you, you mentioned something that, that's so important. The, uh, the ability to be connected to AB is, is just unbelievable. I mean, so, so Anheuser Bush has got 12 breweries in, around the country. So I'm able to, for example, Goose Island, I'm able to brew some of my beers in some of those breweries around the country. Now, it's my recipe, it's Goose Island, the, our brewmaster's recipes. Uh, uh, it's our process. We we approve, you know, all the all the uh, uh, final uh, uh, qualifications of the beer. Uh, but to have access to that brewing system is pretty amazing. So 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 there's a balance between, you know, again having to take these brands and and and, and build out, uh, you know, invest capital in your in your home market versus using having access to that system. So I've got the ability. To do that, which is pretty, maz uh, pretty, pretty amazing. And like I said, secondly, in terms of growing too fast, that's not what the focus is, right? So, so I don't, I'm not, we're not, we don't have to build and, and push this as much as, as we have to try to excite consumers with amazing beer experiences. That, that's the big focus. When I'm in meetings, that's a lot of what I'm being asked and being asked to discuss. What new brands are you guys working on? And what are some of the new uh, new uh, experiences. We own. We own as a as a result of of uh, of uh, acquiring a lesion in Ten Barrel. We have like nine pubs now, and that's an amazing it's new growing business it's, for you it's guys. It's amazing because of the brand experience that you can have in those pubs. Uh, and what's really cool too is is uh, there's a little bit less of a focus on 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 cost, 
right? So, so 10 Barrel, you know, they've got three amazing pubs and sitting with those guys and gals up there. I mean, you know, they're watching their food costs and everything. And, you know, now I come in, it's just like, you know, let's, let's have a better food experience. Let's do some more events and some more things in the pub to get people in and experience the brand. So it's a nice, it's a nice opportunity, again, to help build the brand. And what an opportunity to start building some other pubs and other, uh, other markets to, again, bring people into the brand. Will that be something you guys look I, for? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's an amazing uh, area that uh, is exciting. Because, again, as a, as a brand builder, uh, th that, that, there's nothing more powerful than, than, than giving someone an experience like going into an Apple store or a or a, a, you know, a, a Disney store. I mean, and those are amazing experiences that you can take your brand and, and build out into a pub, so it's pretty And And uh, that, that doesn't disregard any of the, the three-tier system, any of the structure of the three-tier, I mean, you own wholesalers, you own breweries, you're operating you know what, pubs uh, and, and tap rooms now. Yeah, see, um, you're looking for the big conflict headline. I'm not looking for, Bush to put everyone out of business. An obvious, I mean, that's an obvious question. He, he's a writer. He wants conflict. He doesn't want, like, everything's going is, great. Andy, this is an obvious question. Well, You, you know guys what? are operating in all three tiers now. Um, plenty of craft brewers doing the same thing all across the country in a lot of different states. Yep, um, yep. I mean, how do you see that playing out long term? Is this going to be something that people pay more attention to um, and, and try to challenge you guys on? I think, you know, every state's got their laws. There's franchise laws. There's, so, so abiding by those laws in states is, is really what will be the, the governing factor. But I don't think, you know, we don't want to be uh, in the restaurant business or in the bar business. I want to be in the brand building business, right? So, so these things, to, to me, are, are going to be more of a... Uh, uh, more of an opportunity to... So you don't want to be in the restaurant business, but you want to own nine pubs? More, yes. Yeah, more... The pub, I'm confused. Brand, more, but, well, def, my definition of a pub is a brand experience as opposed to, a, to a, you know, owning a, a corner bar type, type environment. So using it more as a way to uh, interact directly with the consumer exactly. and, and provide them some kind of experience to actually touch and handle the brand exactly. more closely. Okay. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, those nachos at Ten Barrel, though, in Portland, are pretty killer. Yeah, that was a that's a great little pub up there, isn't it? It's a brand new pub. Right? So, if you guys, for somebody who doesn't want to be in the restaurant business, I mean, maybe the nacho business is yeah something else you should the look at. The brand business. We're in the the brand the brand <laughs> the brand building business. So, well, but. I know we're just about out of time here, um, and we did get a couple of questions that that actually came through, and I sort of been paying attention to this on and off all day. So, I'll ask you. Um, it's been it's brought it's been brought up a couple times today. What is the strategy behind heavy discounting on Goose uh, if that is your high end? Well, let me say that, uh, and I we can't get too deep into pricing, right? It's it's a uh, legal topic, right? Exactly. But, but I, I will tell you that you know we we uh, uh, we want to elevate beer. We want to elevate beer. We don't want to we don't want to uh, to bring beer down, right? And price is a key component of elevating beer. So, so we don't want to, uh, to, again, bring it down. We will, however, be competitive where we have to be competitive based on local conditions. Right. So we will do that if we have to. But, again, our whole desire, like I said, is to raise beer, is to raise and elevate beer. It does nothing for anybody, us or anybody, to bring beer down and, and, and take, take all the margin out of that. That's it's not part of... One of the things that I think about um, as it relates to pricing and, and kind of where craft beer is headed in the future, do you find that there might be a need for, um, I don't want to call it a budget craft beer brand, but um, you know, a, a brand that more consumers can buy frequently or more regularly that isn't the, uh, <laughs> there's some 14, 15, 99 six packs out there of IPA yeah. in our market. I mean, something that is, yeah. you know, eight ninety nine, seven ninety nine. that is still high quality that people can count pack? on. Oh, uh, six pack. Oh, six pack. Yeah, yeah. Eight ninety nine. you think is low, is low price? Well, when that's we're a... talking about fourteen ninety nine six packs oh, yeah. in Boston, yeah. then yeah, I mean, that's a, that's yeah, a steal. Yeah, I think, I think this, I mean, uh, you know, because again, I get asked that question uh, uh, all the time about uh, about the pricing and trying to uh, hold craft down. You know, I will tell you, I think we have done more to get craft beer to more people than anybody uh, in the country. I mean, we've, we're doing it. I mean, we're getting more craft beer out. So, 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 so the 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 uh, the um, 
Uh, so the intent again of, of, of trying to you know, bring price down and not uh, make it available is, uh, is uh, just not part of what we're trying to do. In terms of the lower price, you know, there's an ingredient cost sure. I, that, that I think is going to be always the barrier. Because, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if you can make a, make a, make a living selling a four ninety nine six six-pack of IPA. I mean, it's I mean just, That seems it's, sort of like the golden unicorn, right? Yeah. Like, if you could have the best tasting IPA for an affordable six-pack price yeah. of, you know, six ninety nine or something, yeah. everybody would be buying it. But Yeah, we're not, we're not uh, I, don't, I don't see that. But, what, but, what was but, it that John Bryan said earlier today, you know, do the, find the most inefficient thing possible or the most impossible thing and, and try, to, try to make it possible? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe that'll be the future. Yeah. It's, it's possible. Uh, you know, there's so many consumers know that n now that, though, uh, the price point is actually a part of the whole brand experience, right? So, the, you know, it, so paying eight ninety nine for a six-pack or ten nine or fourteen ninety nine, it's that savoring. It's like it really is, is different than buying a, uh, a six-pack for four ninety nine. It's a different experience, you know, and part of the whole craft and high-end uh, craze is that, is that experience. It's, 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 it's a lot more than, you know, if you're drinking a a regular, you know, beer mowing along and, and, and down on a nice, you know, drinkable lager. It's a different experience. So, I don't know. I think, I think we're good in terms of pricing. I don't think you'll see a lot of really cheap craft beers out there. So, I'll end uh, with my final question. The same question I asked you a couple uh, weeks back at the CBC. Well, I guess a month back now. More than a month. Um, who are you going to buy next? I, ha I have a list. Now, no one can... No one in this room should share this with anybody, okay? First, <laughs> oh man, we are, we are, there's a lot of conversations going on, a lot of good conversations, so we'll see. I mean, right now, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've got a Legion 10 barrel, we're trying to get them integrated in, and it takes time. Uh, Goose is in great shape, Blue Point's flying, uh, so I think we're, we're, we're pretty busy right now, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, we'll see how things unfold. Um, you know the uh, potentially another deal this year. You think? Oh, I don't know, Chris. I, you're trying to back me into this. I don't. I don't know. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Let's go get some beers. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Okay, see you.